Following TechNode 32, I've had a number of requests via email to explain how to authenticate a secure socket layer connection to a server. Before I go through a worked example using a code walkthrough, I'll just set out the three, perhaps four stages required to make a secure socket layer connection. First phase is hello phase, that's the client sending to a server a request for a secure connection and a certificate exchange phase, that's the server sending back a certificate. And then stage three is exchanging keys. And then stage four, where the actual data exchange takes place. To begin the secure connection, the client starts by making a connection to the server with a, let's call it a client hello message. And in that message, it contains details about the client's ability to support various ciphers and uh, which secure socket layer version it can implement and how many bits of encryption etc. The server then responds with its ability to support the requested encryption ciphers and it confirms which version of cipher should be used together with the version of the secure socket layer. In stage two, the certificate exchange phase, the client now knows which cipher to use for the secure link. It then goes ahead and requests a copy of the service certificate. And when it receives that certificate, it can then authenticate the connection. There are two choices for authentication. It could compare with a known value of certificate uh, fingerprint or key, or it could validate the certificate through a certification authority server. Once the client has validated the certificate, it can then go ahead and generate a key. Uh, and it does that by generating a random key, which together with the server's key, it passes through the cipher to generate an agreed key for the, for the communication link and then it sends that back to the server. The server then deciphers the new key using its private key and then confirms the link is established and normal HTTP requests can now go ahead. Each one of course will be encrypted and decrypted by the client and server. Next is an example code walkthrough based on my earlier example. In this expanded version of the first code example, I've now included um, some typical addresses. Uh, server 1 or 2, uh, server 1 is Google, server 2 is Things Speak, and I've also looked up their keys, their um, fingerprints as they're referred to, and I use the grc.com webpage where you can freely go and enter an address and it will tell you what the uh, certificate number is and those are examples of the certificate numbers. Note that in both cases those certificate numbers are 20 bytes long or 160 bits uh, wide so you'll often see SSL 128 or 160 or 204 or 1024 bit encryption. Those two currently are 160 bit um, the, the, the elements of the code where I've highlighted show where the Wi-Fi cl client secure or client secure library is added an object declared to support the secure socket layer and then at what stage roughly the uh, client generates a random key when it just before it makes a connection to the server. When the command if client verify fingerprint one server one is executed, what that's doing is requesting the certificate from in this case uh, server one is Google and um, fingerprint one is being is the comparison that will be made later on. That's a known pre-known certificate value. When the certificate is received back from Google, it's compared with fingerprint one and if the two values are the same it's a valid certificate and the secure link can continue. If not, in my example here, the program stops. The link stops. By the time the client 
issues the command get the search entity you it can be sure that the the, the link is, is a valid secure link between itself and a known server called Google in this case. Now further routine HTTP requests and um, retrievals can be made and every time they're made the key is used to encrypt the data traffic, decrypt by the server, uh, collate the data, re encrypt the data and send it back where it's de-encrypted and then displayed on the client's uh, system. The important aspect is that only the client and the server can decrypt that data. Well, given normal computing capability uh, used to be based on the number of years to decrypt a message, perhaps now it's in months but all the same it will take a significant amount of computing capability to go through every combination to decrypt this this message so in summary using um, transport layer security or secure socket layers give you a secure link that can only practically be read by the client and the server you'd have to go to a thousand and twenty bit or much more for financial transactions perhaps. Uh, implementing um, TLS SSL in Arduino or ESP8266 is reasonably straightforward as the code example shows. You should always use port 443 that's the default for a secure socket layer connection. The client must undertake server authentication if you need to do that. I should also emphasize that you don't have to authenticate the server. You could make a SSL connection to Google. Um, you, the client, generates a random key, sends that to Google. The library does all this for you. Uh, Google sends its certificate back. You send your key back and the link takes place. There's no authentication taking place, but the link continues as normal. So that's worth bearing in mind. And occasionally the server may request uh, client authentication. So your code may need to uh, provide uh, or provision for that eventuality, although I expect that will be very rare. You can create your own certificate and you can self sign it, but if it's not registered with a certificate authority, probably no one's going to trust it and, and enable a connection to take place. Um, keys don't have a long life. They're probably only valid for about one month. So try not to embed that in your code. Perhaps use an external file that you can refresh with the current key. That's it folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it is informative and you find it useful.